Today we're going to talk about Guyana, the neighboring country to Venezuela, uh, Suriname, um, and Brazil, uh, according to this map. Um, I saw something interesting about this border with Guyana. When you look at the Apple Maps, you see that there is a hard line here uh, showing a border between two countries. But if we go to Google Maps, we see there is a dotted line. And Google says this because they have recognized that the majority of territory claimed by Guan is, dis is disputed and does not belong to them. This is why they uh, display a dashed line. Um, that was some one's opinion on Twitter. I looked into a few more of these. I um, also on Reddit people talking about the reason why Venezuela, um, now that Guana has oil, Venezuela decided they want the territory um, specifically. And there's loads of court cases going on and whatnot about that bring it to the world court apparently i haven't read too much up on that specifically but what i am more interested in is the fact that guana is having such a big period of growth and that a country like venezuela wants to kind of muscle in on that um apparently a lot of the oil in guana is offshore and according to some um, analysts even if venezuela were to be able to invade um parts of guana and take over those oil rigs they wouldn't have the ex expertise to operate them and they probably wouldn't be able to get the benefit from that that they would actually hope um just to give you an idea of how much of Guana is contested, we again go back to the Google stu uh, Google Earth Studio view. So we can kind of assume that it's from this dotted line here all the way to this dotted line right down the middle of the country. That's the bit that Venezuela want. And I think even Suriname want this little triangle over here. So yeah, kind of an awkward situation um, there currently. According to, again, to some other online analysts that I've been listening to, even if the Venezuelan army were to try and invade, they'd kind of have a hard time getting through all this jungle. Now, the Venezuelan army is a lot bigger than the Guana army. Um, here we have 3,000 active personnel in the Guana Defense Force versus 115,000 in the Venezuelan, um, Venezuelan army. So it wouldn't be a fair contest in that sense, but would they get there and would it be such an easy place to just walk into? That's kind of the question. And what would the world say about it? There was an article here somewhere about the US denying that they are going to have um, any troops in the region that can maybe come across that again as we go through the video um, just very interesting news in general from that region i hope obviously nothing ba uh, bad happens that everything remains calm because it's actually having a quite a good news story world's fastest growing economy guana could grow by over 100 percent by 2028 um oil, big oil boom turned into the world's turned into the world's fastest growing economy how oil made uh, guana the world's fastest growing economy loads of stories in that direction and there was one story about yeah inflation being a risk if it keeps growing so quickly. New wells pump out 600,000 barrels every day. I sold 1.6 billion in revenue for Guana's government. It's a lot of money because if you look at the actual overall economy, which I have here, it only has a GDP of about 20 billion. There it is. Um, in nominal 60 billion GDP 2023. So all extra revenue, of course, is going to be quite useful there. Look at their export goods. At the moment, crude petroleum um, is the big one. 5 billion worth sugar, gold, bauxite, obviously there's some mining there as well. Main export partners, the United States. So I guess it must be um, US oil companies. I think Exxon is involved in that operation. See quite an interesting range of countries they're exporting to. Singapore, UAE, um, UK and Canada. Just Singapore is a curious one there specifically. I wonder if it's to do with the shrimp or it's just a curious correlation. I know the Asian states are very big into fish uh, products in general, sea products. Import goods, the highest there is floating drilling platforms, which of course makes sense right now. There are huge pieces of infrastructure needed to um, exploit that oil. We can take a quick look at the uh, map. Let's see where I have it. Um, the actual oil deposits, there's this kind of block further out to sea. And this is Venezuela claiming this red block, whereas uh, Guana's inclusive economic zone um, would be that particular area there. Most countries... Uh, are in, uh, aligned with this idea that if you have certain land out from your coast is yours, but clearly the Venezuelans are trying to have different ideas. They did sign, um, well, a referendum was passed. Venezuelans say voters back claim to oil-rich uh, region in Guana. Um, yeah. On November, uh, ExxonMobil, low access president of Guana, uh, display of provocation went to there, raised the flag, yeah, okay, some curious. Okay, this is actually the same map that we were just looking at um, previously. Yeah. Um, interesting um, story there, basically, that Venezuela thinks they have an actual claim on it. And I was reading a small bit through how far back this claim is, and it goes back to the 1800s or something. So, yeah, it doesn't really seem to be that relevant to me at this point in time. But again, I don't know enough about the story. 
interesting with the demographics, you've got a big pop um, of people here, big pocket, um, so actually quite healthy demographics. Fertility ratio is quite good too, um, 2.35. Net migration, I guess that's people leaving um, probably still a relatively poor country. Um, and yeah, a lot of people will go to, I suppose, other South American countries and maybe migrate up to the States. Same with what's happening in Venezuela currently. There's another two interesting news stories. Um, oh yeah, CIA um, hosting secret US military bases in Esquipo for escalation. Venezuela claims sort of this idea that there are US bases in the, the region between the two countries. Um, oh yeah, this was interesting too. So this was uh, Guana condemns Venezuela for signing into law referendum approving annexation of disputed region. Um, meanwhile, Guana is co collaborating with the US, France and India to fortify its military in the event of an any annexation attempts. The president has said recently, but again, they only have 3,600 troops, so you know, watch how much fortification you can really do in that sense. Um, what else did I have specifically open here? This is again looking at the uh, petroleum blocks in the sea. And I wanted to find any military installations, I did find a few army camps, but there was a few sheds that weren't that interesting to show you. What was more interesting was this is kind of like a checkpoint on the Venezuela Guana border. Again, we have a dotted line. Not a hard line whereas if we go to the apple maps we will see we have a distinctly more solid line this is the same checkpoint so this is kind of like a shed uh, maybe there's a barrier in there so you're not going to be able to drive around it that easily potentially uh, crossing from border to border this is the curious thing for me about this specific instance is we have venezuela on this side now just take focus on this big road this is like a national road it enters guana here i'm assuming it kind of doesn't actually cross the border again, you're, otherwise there would have to be a checkpoint, so, or if there is, it's just a very minor moment. Um, well, okay, clearly it does cross the border, this is why it kind of confused me, so really this is a road in Venezuela, nothing to do with Guana, because when you zoom out, the road continues, you know, out, outside of this territory, it's only for this little tiny corner, they're actually having to do this border crossing, so I kind of was wondering, if this is a border crossing indeed, um, why isn't there a second one at the other side? Now, I'm assuming this is all necessary, this detour, because of this mountain um, over here. Okay, it's not showing us to it. Oh, yeah, okay, sorry, right here, Caravanoma, 1,900 meters. That's probably why they're doing this detour around, but yeah, I still thought it was a bit of a curious instance. Um, yeah, um, other than that, I think there was one or two more things I wanted to run through um, in terms of its stability, uh, it's the 109th most fragile country in the world, up to right in the middle, so it's not specifically unstable, um, unstable, I would suggest from that. Not much information here about the uh, production of energy yet. Consumes 0 0.035, it doesn't talk about production on this particular EIA map. Um, no data on electricity either. In terms of rankings for doing business, 134, it's kind of in the middle, lower tier. Very free, relatively free state, 73 is quite a good score. Here we have the GDP growth. Now this is kind of cool just seen um, what has happened in the country. We did see those articles previously about how high GDP growth has been. You can see there, Venezuela 4.5 versus 26.6 for Guana. That's pretty you know, pretty incredible. Um, we have two in Colombia, Brazil 1.5. Now, of course, Guana is a much smaller country, so if you do find a big oil deposit, it's going to have a significantly bigger proportionate effect on a smaller country. But still, yeah, quite curious. And you have this graph here. Very normal, 5% is quite good, 3% is quite good, but yeah nothing special and then we can have this big pop in 2020 43 20 62 38 so yeah, it, it is it is quite a big deal as you can see why Venezuela is aware of the situation of course it doesn't justify invading another country um, um, in terms of government debt that's obviously been brought down quite a lot it's obviously pretty good no data on Venezuela it's because they probably defaulted and stuff um, let's go down to the actual chart they used to be quite high in the 2000s, but they've really managed to bring that down. That's quite impressive. It's always a good thing to bring down your debt. They've really focused on that, evidently. Um, probably means that their interest payments on that are also quite low. Interest paid in public debt, 0.3, so super, super low um, as a percentage of GDP. Um, unemployment data used to have always 10% unemployment. It kind of went up there during the COVID years as well, but they brought that down to about 12%. So yeah, that seems to be normal for the country. Let's have a quick look at inflation. Let me find inflation here. Here we are. Currently 1.1%. And they've had a history of pretty stable inflation numbers, to be honest. Um, okay, this is only the last uh, two decades, three decades. 
but um, let's see, 15%. So there was never any moment of hyperinflation. I wonder if their uh, currency pegged or something. Um, let's see if I can quickly find it on their economic um, page. Research for currency. Do, do, do. Debt has received its entire wheat supply from the United States on concessional terms. It's now supplied on a grant basis. The gr That's interesting. Uh, currency generated by the sale of wheat is used for a purpose agreed upon by the US. So clearly they're very tied in with the US. Uh, Guan is heavily indebted. Even we just saw that their uh, debt isn't that bad. Um, reduction of the debt burden has been one of the present uh, top priorities. Yeah, uh, as we saw that on the graphs just a moment ago. Currency, Guanese dollar. So yeah, probably is very associated with the dollar. Uh, in some various ways. Quite interesting. Uh, petroleum, again, here, 2010, significant offshore oil finds by Exxon has renewed interest in foreign investment in the country. Um, oil fields holding over 3.2 billion barrels um, began extraction in 2019. So a lot of hope there for the economy in that sense. Yeah, so I think um, we'll just take one last look here. There's a few interesting subsea um, cables, but they don't go too far. One goes to this um, island. Trinidad and Tobago, and the other one goes up here to some Barbados. Yeah, exactly. In terms of flooding, they're going to have some issues come yeah later years. A lot of the city of Georgetown will be underwater, according to this um, estimate here. If you look at the population, basically everybody lives in just Georgetown. I'm pretty sure that's the same. Yeah, you literally see that's where they all live. So I'm going to have to relocate a little bit up into the rainforest somewhat. In terms of global conflict tracker, um, we just see here Venezuela is listed as an ongoing crisis, but yeah, currently nothing suggestive with Guana yet there um, in terms of what could happen between two countries. And yeah, again, my overall feeling at the moment is from what I've heard from different analysts is there won't be any uh, military intervention, but apparently Venezuela are building up troops on the border. And like we saw with Ukraine, the Russians were building up troops, people said nothing would happen, and then the US had said things would happen, and then things did happen, and it was, it was a lot of big mess. So hopefully nothing similar happens here because to be honest, if they did invade Guana, I don't think it would actually be such a big, good, uh, let's say, silver bullet for Venezuela. They probably wouldn't have the um, ability to extract the oil properly anyway, and it would just create more mess and more suffering in a region that's already um, has, has enough problems as it is.